This episode of Multiamory is brought to you by Audible. Visit audibletrial.com slash multiamory for a free 30-day trial and one free audiobook. Kind of like two people in a one-person kitchen. When you walk in, it means I can't, can't get, get out. out. Yeah. Yeah, we wrote a country song about living in this tiny apartment. This tiny, tiny apartment. Are you on mute? <laughs> oh, hey. If you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out-of-the-box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non-monogamy, then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the Multiamory Podcast. On this episode of the Multi-Amory Podcast, we are talking to the dating advice girl, Erin Tillman. Erin gave us some specific tips for making great dating profiles, as well as for finding other poly or non-monogamous partners, both online and off the line. In off the line. In the real life. In the real life. Yes. Um, I do. <laughs> I do want to have a quick disclaimer. Uh, I apologize if there's background noise in this one. Um, there is... Apparently, every single apartment in this building in Hong Kong where Dedeker and I are staying is doing construction right now. <laughs> every single one. Every single one, except for this one that we're in, thankfully. Uh, so anyway. Um, no, it, on this floor, it's like every single apartment is being renovated, and then the one part, apartment that is not has a baby in it. Yeah. So it's just noise <laughs> all the time. So anyway, if there's God. like hammering noise or, or rumbling or whatever, we, we apologize. Children screaming. Um, hopefully that will not take away from the amazing content that is what Aaron had to share with us in this. Let's get to it. All right, let's get to the episode. And here we are with Aaron Tillman. Aaron, thank you so much for being on the show. Yay! Yay! Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be on the show. Woo! Uh, so instead of us just reading your bio and trying to explain what it is you do, could you just tell our listeners real quick, like basically what what's your deal what are you all about <laughs> yes yes of course my deal here we go in a nutshell so i am aaron tillman aka the dating advice girl and for almost 10 years now i've been a dating coach um helping singles navigate through the sometimes crazy waters of dating um in the last five years or so i've done a lot more speaking and coaching around uh, non-monogamy and also consent. Uh, college campus speaking is a big, big thing. I love that age group. I've been doing a lot there. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've done everything from uh, my own podcast, radio show, to I used to host speed dating and singles events. I worked at a matchmaking wow. agency last wow. year for a little bit. Wow. I'm working on my second book right now. I mean, I've, I've kind of done almost everything there is to do in the category of da like dating industry because it's like a full <laughs> industry now. Um, yeah, and there's some other things in the works potentially. But uh, yeah, if I, I can catch up on some sleep, then I'll make those things happen too. <laughs> but that's in a nutshell. Right? My website, thedatingadvicegirl.com. So there you go. Nice. Sweet. Well, I have to say, I'm That's so awesome. excited to have you on the show because we get questions all the time about the dating process. Um, I mean, I feel like even if you're heading into the realm of dating and you're looking for like the most vanilla, traditional, monogamous relationship ever, that in itself can be so complicated and people can be so overwhelmed. And when people want to branch out and do something non-traditional or want to find someone who's willing to be polyamorous or non-monogamous or kinky with them, that at least from my perspective, it just like triples the amount of like how daunting it can be and how com complex it can be. Um, and so I'm just curious to know in your practice, like what are the most common mistakes you see in dating profiles? And this can be like-, like on Online dating Yeah, online dating specifically, regardless of if what somebody's looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, you know, I just want to say, you're so right. You know, um, growing up in, this, in a small town in the Midwest, you know, I was kind of just seeing what I was seeing in terms of relationships and dating around me in terms of friends, family, um, just just neighbors, whoever, it was vanilla monogamy, date for a little bit, marriage, kids, 
you know, die together. Like <laughs> very relationship escalator. Yeah, exactly. Relationship yeah. escalator, exactly. You know, and and so it was so interesting that you know when I moved to and obviously in all big cities, but I chose Los Angeles to move here 14 years ago. But you know, you you are introduced to so many different kinds of people who are living in so many different ways and having so many different kinds of relationships, and so. For me, it was like, wow, there's so many people who don't even know about this. And especially, you know, Dedeker, when you're talking about coaching, you know, in terms of coaching, it's amazing to me how many people just say in the baby boomer age bracket or um, say 40 plus, 50 plus that have never even heard of polyamory. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of things or non-monogamy, I think a lot of a lot of these things are being talked about like in the media or there'll be some like controversial story and people are like, oh my God, here's this thing and it went totally (laughs) wrong and that's a scary thing that people are doing. But a lot of people don't even know that that's an option for them. Like maybe Mm -hmm. they felt like they were wired more for non-monogamy but have never felt like that was a real option. Um, So enter enter to the scene online dating and dating apps. Um, And a lot, I would say, so I have two groups of people people that I usually coach. It's usually um, just out of college, early 20s, or baby boomers who are newly divorced. Interesting. Oh, wow. It makes sense. Well, because they're both groups that are like entering dating for the first time. You know, like entering yeah, dating when yeah. it's not just like the cutie next to me in my class in college <laughs> and people, yeah, just recently divorced. It makes sense. Right. And I mean, you know, I, I especially when I was working at this, uh, I was working at a matchmaking agency last year. And at that agency, it was very interesting because the clientele was generally late, late 40s to 70. And oh, wow. yeah, and so because I usually work with younger people, it was very interesting to work with those people. And a lot of them were, and by the way, I do have to say the matchmaking agency was uh, mainstream, monogamous. It was very uh, typical American society, whatever. Right. Um, but it was interesting, though, because a lot of those people had no idea. And one of the first questions they would ask me was, well, how do I even set up an online dating mm-hmm. profile? Or mm-hmm. there's all these different sites. Like, which one do I choose from? Or dating apps and Tinder. Oh, my God. Like, their heads were exploding, right? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, going, I mean, I could go, obviously, I have a lot to say about that. I could go on for, for a while with that. But, um, but going back to your question, I think the, the first place to start with online dating profiles and dating apps is to be very honest about um, just generally what you are looking for. I think the biggest mistake people make is they go negative. So they're like, they go back to an old relationship or something like, oh, well, that person, that partner was this and that. So, hello, everybody, here's my face. I don't want these things. And it's like, oh, my God, like, why are you saying negative things, right? Right. You see that? I feel like you see that so often. I see it all the time. All the time. It's a huge turnoff for me. Yeah, don't do this, don't do that. Not looking for this, not looking for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, keep it positive. It's a law of of attraction in some ways, you know? It's like the thing you're saying you don't want, you'll probably end up getting because you're saying those words and then it's attracting to that long, whatever. That's a little (laughs) woo-woo potentially for some (laughs) people. But... uh, (laughs) <laughs> but so yeah so so really being clear on what you do want and putting that in a in a non-long-winded way on a profile because the other thing that people run into is they'll write paragraphs and paragraphs of things and no one's intention spans are that long like everyone <laughs> zones out after a while and most times let's be honest like I've, I've had arguments with colleagues about this like it shouldn't just be about pictures but guess what it is like we're yeah. visual people yeah. that is the first thing mm-hmm. people are going to notice is your face you know or whatever picture you're putting out there so they're focusing on your face so in terms of words or whatever your profile says keep it short to the point and positive if someone is going to be or is polyamorous then how do you include that in your dating profile and should you so that's an amazing question um i think um we were at an event all of us were at an event <laughs> so, yeah. uh, speaking yeah. not too long ago and this came up and um it can be a little oh gosh you know even though like, even in a place like los angeles where polyamory is more i guess for lack of another word accepted or um people at least know what it is people might have had partners who were poly and those kind of a thing uh those kind of things you are in a pool generally if you're on a mainstream app or or dating website you're in a pool of people that's just like everyone so Mm -hmm. how do you put that across you know and I've, i've had it sucks because i've had some people colleagues and friends who have said they're 
uh, polyamorous and all these things. And sometimes they'll get like really like nasty messages from people yeah, and stuff. We, we've all been there. Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, you guys have too? Mm-hmm. Oh gosh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Super nasty. Like people being very offended or affronted by the fact that you're doing this and calling you whore or slut. I, I feel. I feel like in my personal experience, it seems to have gotten better in the past couple years. Mm-hmm. When I first got on OK Cupid, like gosh, like seven or eight years ago, when I was first talking about polyamory and non-monogamy, I got many more nasty messages back yeah. then. I feel like it's getting better, but that's just my own personal experience. Yeah. Oh, that's so crazy. I mean, I, I think because so many people, again, aren't informed. And I think it's the fear attached to this word of this thing. And then they think like, that's like polygamy and it's not. But it's like, I mean, that's like the biggest thing. I, I feel like the biggest question around specifically polyamory for vanilla people that I answer, they're like, wait, polyamory, isn't that like polygamy, like marriage of what? I'm like, no, yeah. no. And, and yeah. that or that or that is just straight up cheating. And so I have, it's like each time it's like, no, well, cheating is non-consensual and nobody's like, not all parties. No, like here's the difference, you know? So it's, yeah, so it's, it's, it can be very confusing. So one thing that came up at the event we spoke at was I like the idea, and I think someone else actually mentioned this to start, but I like the idea of putting sex positive on your profile in some way. I think a lot of people who are poly know the term sex positive. Mm. So then you can, it's almost like a starter conversation. So once you put that, then someone can, um, if you are interested up to that point, you match with each other with whatever uh, site you're working with. And then you can start talking about the nuances and specific things attached to what that means for you. Because that means so, something different for so many people. And so, again, yeah. to not be long-winded, it's about abbreviating what you are and what you want on this in this digital framework. But then just to start the conversation, and then after you say that, then it's a great way to like elaborate, you know, and get to know someone. It's interesting because it, it makes me think about, you know, like one of the problems with putting polyamory aside from the people who assume, oh, that means polygamy or, or it means cheating, but even people who have somewhat of an understanding of what polyamory is, something we've talked about a lot is like, just because another person's polyamorous doesn't mean they do something that's necessarily similar to what you do, because mm-hmm. there is so much sure. within that. The idea of yeah. putting sex positive, I haven't tried this, so I can't say. It's, it's interesting that it would spark conversation which you know we would all say you need to have anyway because polyamory isn't just a like oh yeah i do that and you're done <laughs> right it's like the start of a conversation i'm interested though like it just seems like putting sex positive is like too vague but but maybe maybe it's not like i've i've toyed around with putting ethical non-monogamy on mine and have found that that's that has attracted more interest from people who weren't already poly because hmm. they can put together the words and are like, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That I sounds intriguing. Tell me mm-hmm. more. Yeah. Well, I feel like the conversation comes down to what I see most people struggling with is like, how, how can I be honest and upfront about what it is that I want without scaring people away? <laughs> um, yes. And yes. I think some people are more comfortable with this perceived rejection than others are like more more people some people are comfortable with like whatever i'll put non-monogamy i'll put polyamory i'll put specifically that i have x number of partners um and if people pass me by that's fine other people um i don't want to lose any opportunity don't want to lose the opportunity sometimes like other people struggle with like i want people to like see me first and not see like that i've put polyamorous or not see that i've put down i have a wife or whatever like i want people to see me and so sometimes people struggle with like well does that count as me hiding it if i don't have it out there or is that me just trying to at least start a conversation with people i'm wondering where you fall on on that debate yeah i mean for me well here's the one thing that i've learned in in the almost 10 years that I've been doing all of this is that there's not one way and everyone's a little different and what works for them and how it, how they're able to express what what they are, what they need. Everyone's a little different and everyone, you know, some people are like, this is who I am, out with it, here is all the information and people will be damned if they don't accept what I am, you know? And then some people are like, oh my gosh, like I'm still getting comfortable with this. So mm. I don't want to be so out there. And, you know, we mentioned earlier, like I'm somebody who doesn't like labels. 
So for me, I feel like, you know, because I've had all, a whole range of relationships where I've had very monogamous relationships. I've had um, non-monogamous relationships. I've had, I mean, I've had a range. So I, I don't like a label of I'm only this or I'm only that. So yeah. that's why I feel like generally speaking, again, everyone's a little different. But generally speaking, if, if there is something um, where that kind of includes kind of everything to start a conversation, then you can discuss. I mean, you know, because I could go on a date with someone tomorrow. I actually might have a date later tonight. Oh, I don't nice. Know. <laughs> I don't know. It's getting late and like, oh, please, I don't know. Whatever. We'll see. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, it's like, it's like, okay, so, you know, if I met this person under, under the uh, understanding that I'm more open-minded, let's say, I'm not, I personally am in a place where I do kind of want someone to get to know me first rather than seeing me as this label of this of this category of thing before they even. So it's like, all, for me, I feel like there's a lot of judgment that comes with that before they even get to know who Aaron is. And so for me, it's important that they kind of have an idea that, oh, she might not be super like religious, monogamous, nothing wrong with any of these things, but just Aaron might not be religious, monogamous, all these things. But I wonder what else she is. You know, mm -hmm. I, there's a lot more she could be. So let's actually go. And this is the other thing. Let's actually go together in person, face to face and get to know each other and have these conversations and actually be able to like look in each other's eyeballs and feel energy and stuff. Because um, I think it's a different thing to just read it on online and not feel somebody or really have a conversation about it face to face, you know. Um, I think a lot can be lost in translation, as, as we all know, on some levels, if it's just virtual. Yeah. Um, in the yeah. beginning, especially in the beginning, you know, so it's really great if you can choose a word like sex positive or ethical non-monogamy or something like that. If you can put that on a profile, it's really good way to weed people out that aren't interested in that, those kind of things. You know, someone who, you know, is looking for something monogamous and more traditional, then they're going to see that. And again, like you were saying, um, Jace, you know, if someone doesn't know what e what ethical non-monogamy is or sex positivity is, they can kind of put the words together and kind of get a general idea and be like, oh, that's not for me. Or, oh, that's interesting. So it's just a kind of a, a good way to start a conversation with someone online. Um, because I am, you know, I am someone who thinks that I, I think it's really good to have those, like, conversations about intimacy and sexuality in, in front of someone's face to feel their energy and see their reactions and and that way you can also get to know the person you're actually interacting with and it's not about like who's this virtual person that is like just this picture and and all these things I think it's really important to have a deeper conversation about those things in person so again just putting a, a small word on your profile is a good way to start a conversation when when dating online or through an app Okay, so we, we awesome. mentioned this a little bit in our pre-interview, but how would you, like, do you think that that changes at all based on gender? Ooh. Or sexual identity. Or sexual identity, yeah, if you're gay or straight. Like, do you think that, you know, if, if putting sex positive might get a better reaction one yeah, way or the other I guess, or something? Yeah, I guess that what we've seen people kind of complain about a lot is that women talk about, like, well, when I put sex positive or polyamory, like, guys assume I'm just DTF, you know, and that men being yeah. like, when I put that on my profile, no women will ever message Nobody's me. At least that, that's men. what it is along, yeah. like, cisgender heterosexual lines. Um, yeah. But I was curious to see what kind of your evaluation of that is. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that, I think that everyone should do what feels comfortable for them. And again, I, there's no right way for everybody. I think if somebody is really in a place where they want to weed out people who aren't in line with that and they're willing to kind of deal with like people sending them messages of like, what are you doing? If they can kind of block that out, I think mm -hmm. the best way to go is to be as honest as possible about those kind of things. But also, I mean, I've definitely, I mean, in my own dating life, you know, I, I, like I said, I have many different kinds of relationships, have and had many different kinds of relationships and if I'm single, which I currently am, um, I usually don't go into too much detail on a profile, online dating or dating app profile. Usually what I'll do is I'll say something like, um, open, very open-minded, um, LGBTQIAA ally, um, mm -hmm. you know, some, I'll say, I'll say a lot of things that are kind of in the realm, um, of being more open-minded, like some buzzwords again, open-minded, LGBTQIA, certain things like that. So then people who aren't 
at least kind of aligned with that won't be interested or usually aren't let's say in my in my experiences they usually yeah. aren't and then again yeah. that's just my way to start the conversation so then when i'm in person with them i'll be like so what's your feeling about do you know what polyamory is <laughs> or you know have you like so you can start having more conversations because actually the people that i've been out with some of the people i've been out with that i've met virtually um and then met in person they actually even if they haven't had a, a non-monogamous relationship they still were knew about it a little bit or kind of curious about it um some not all but no one but again because of the things i've put on my profile about you know i don't know <laughs> I, for some reason burlesque like because i have fr- <laughs> a lot of friends in the burlesque community so if i say if i put burlesque or something on on my profile people are like okay that's interesting so she's probably like pretty comfortable with her body like so there's just like things like that mm-hmm. that can really make people feel more comfortable around um those things and and well either attract or or detract them from you or right. to getting to know right. you more all right we're going to take a quick break from our conversation with aaron to talk about some ways that you can help more episodes like this to happen. Uh, If you get value out of this show, which we love doing and we do for you for free, uh, if you want to give a little bit back to the show to help support us in doing this, the best way to do that is to go to patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash multiamory. And there you can become one of our patrons by pledging a certain amount of money every month to help us keep doing this. Uh, and we're not talking a ton of money here. It's not like PBS that tries to get you to pay like $50 a month or something. And like, all you no, get is a freaking tote bag. Right. Uh, just for, for $5 a month, for example, we have a special private Facebook group that we invite our patrons to at the $5 a month and over level or at the $9 a month and up level. We have a video discussion group that we do once a month with everybody that's been fantastic and wonderful and we have one coming up in about a week. Uh, So we'd love to have you as part of that and we'd love to know that this show brings you value and that you'd like to give back to it and help us keep doing it. Uh, Our next Patreon goal is at $1,500, we'll be able to hire people to do transcriptions of our episodes so that we can actually have transcriptions so you don't have to listen to all of the audio or if you want to take a section of it to send to a friend of yours. Or if you're hearing impaired. Or if you're yeah, hearing then impaired. you can actually read the episode. Um, or it's easier yeah. for you to, to read something than it is to listen to a podcast. Um, we'd love to offer that. Uh, it's a logistical hurdle. And so we're excited that Patreon will give us the chance to actually do that. Uh, so thank you so much for your support. Again, that's patreon.com slash multiamory. Another way that you can help support our show is going to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever it is that you're listening to this podcast and just take two minutes to leave us a review. The reviews help us show up higher in search results. It helps more people find our show. It, it helps convince more people to give our show a listen. And it also lets us know that we're on the right track with the kind of content that we're delivering. So again, log on to iTunes, log on to Stitcher and leave us a review. Um, and our sponsor for this week is Audible. Um, I know I got my mom really into audiobooks as she goes for walks every day. So um, audibletrial.com slash multiamory gets you a free 30-day trial and one free audiobook. I know, Jace, you said you were listening to The Handmaiden's Tale or yeah, you I, downloaded I, it? I just used one of my credits this month to buy yeah. The Handmaiden's Tale, uh, which I'm really excited just because they, because of the show, they also re-released a new, like, fully cast voice acted oh, wow. version of the audiobook. Oh, crazy. Wow. So I'm, that's the one I got as the special edition. Um, nice. So I'm really oh. excited to check that out. That should be a lot of fun. That's super awesome. Uh, yeah, because so, getting the books that are voiced is, is always really exciting. There's like a really good voiced version of Ender's Game. Mm. Um, I listened to a cool voiced version of American Gods, which I think was also made mm. because the TV show is coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool. I listened to an audiobook of The Road and it wasn't voiced. And so the, the oh. guy reading it just kind of had to do a weird little kid voice for the little kid. And <laughs> Usually made, that's it, what they it are. It made but... me hate the little kid, uh, which is unfortunate. Really? Yeah, because oh, no, it was a weird it was a weird man voice trying uh, to be a I little see. kid. Yeah. Anyway, uh, um, but get those full voiced versions on Audible. Yeah, they're yeah. awesome. Uh, I also and wanted to want say, to yeah, that, yes, so it's, yes. it's audibletrial.com slash yeah. multiamory. Uh, and yep. that just for doing the trial, Audible will support our show. So you don't even have to continue subscribing to it. I think you probably will. Uh, I love it. But even if you just do the trial, uh, we'd really appreciate it if you would take the time to do that if you haven't already done it. Yeah, so audibletrial.com slash multiamory. 
Um, oh, I wanted to move on just to a slightly different subject. Um, sometimes I know in dating I am relatively polysaturated or potentially yes. I just don't have a lot of time because I'm working a million jobs and doing this podcast and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so when getting into a newish relationship, how do you kind of... Um, without like preemptively just telling someone like, oh, I'm not gonna have a ton of time for you, but how do you like sort of get into talking to someone about like being honest just about the time or the emotional bandwidth you may have or can dedicate to a new partner, um, like when you get into a relationship? Well, this one's really easy for me. I'm yeah. really yeah. busy all the time <laughs> and I really can't be with someone it's not going to work with me if, if someone wants to be it needs to be with me all the time like four times a week like all this you know i i can't do it like even mm -hmm. if I, take take non-monogamy out of it like i am i'm a very independent uh only child who lives alone and i need space <laughs> and i'm really busy so it so i've dated i've dated i've dated partners who you know their one their love language is quality time and they need to be around me all the time and it just it won't work for me it just won't because for me it just feels like st like too much it was like a little stifling so or do you tend to make that known like very yes. early on okay yeah, say, I mean, like, hey, in, a, yeah. in a nice way like i'm not mm -hmm. a total brute like hey <laughs> <laughs> but but i definitely am someone like i'm like listen i'm very busy like you know let's try to like if someone says oh my god can we hang out tomorrow i'll be like well you know i have some time you know next week or like on sunday mm -hmm. or something i'm really busy with work and you know the thing is too i usually tend to date people who like the fact that i'm ambitious mm -hmm. so that kind of goes along with it too it's like they generally are supporters of that of me like following career dreams and such and so there's not a lot of argument around it like i said i've had a few situations or a few partners i've dated where i could tell even from er like early on when we met it was like gosh this person is really feeling bad that i can't hang out a lot yeah, and so i've so had hard. to just be like listen i the only amount of time i can only commit like one one night a week right now f to you and i that's all i can do right now and if it's not okay i'm really sorry but i'm that's the best i can do right now you know in, some, in terms of self-care even and so generally speaking i'd say most people um even though they might not like it or they're like oh you know it's more of there's a respect there but i'm being honest with them you know rather yeah. than saying oh yeah yeah let's hang out like three times a week and then like it's maybe once and then they're upset like I, I i i try to and i think that can go like in the whole category of polyamory non-monogamy um anything relationship based i for me it works better to just be honest and direct yeah. and again it might be it's a, some conversations are very difficult to have but in the end for me i just prefer to have everything out in the open in terms of like what I know will probably work for me or won't or and to know what will work for them and won't up front rather than and it, you know there's stuff that you learn with someone after you're dating them for a while that you will adjust perhaps to meet each other in the middle but I just I feel like you just you eliminate so much drama and so much stress if you're just like okay I this I kind of know this this fundamental thing about time like I know this about me so let's talk about it <laughs> yeah that's yeah. smart to yeah. broach that subject early yeah yes yeah well, thank you awesome question, yeah. thank you yeah, so so my my next question is so we we talked a little bit about dating profiles and you know the importance of being as brief as possible and the importance of your pictures and all that. What about when we get to actually writing a first message? So I have two parts to this. One is just if you have any quick tips in terms of of writing that message, but then also I was curious about how that changes along gender lines. So I know generally on OkCupid, men are the, again, assuming heterosexuality here, that men are the ones who write the first messages. Um, and I found that with guys who will write to me on my profile. It's also men writing to me a lot more than women as my profile is open to both. Um, that I have found that the women I do know who have decided to be like, you know what, I'm gonna start writing messages and actually seeking people out, that they're often surprised 
at how few responses they get. Oh no, that's me hands down. Like every single time I've sent a first message on, okay, specifically on OkCupid, okay like I've never gotten a response, which is so weird. Yeah, well it's like, because men- That is so, weird. that's shocking. I'm shocked by that. that is, that's crazy. <laughs> no, I, w- I would think for sure, because every man that I talk yeah. to is like, like Complains I never get about, messages yeah. from women, you know? So I don't yeah. know, maybe it's just a weird fluke. Maybe yeah. I was just like way too intimidating. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's happened to me too. I mean, one reason, you know, like I get asked a lot, uh, what what website or what apps are better than others or whatever. And one of the ones, oh my God, I don't know if I should say it, but some of the ones, I'll just say this, some of the ones that are more female led in cis, mm-hmm. in cis relationship scenarios uh, where women message guys first, I think those are really hard. And I think that it's, it switches up the dynamic in the sense that I think that generally speaking, a lot of cis women want a guy to take the lead. So if you're mm-hmm. already setting it up in an app where the woman set, takes the lead first, even with messages, it kind of flips the balance, which is no pr- a problem. I tend to I tend to identify more as more of an alpha female, and I tend to date more submissive partners and such, but um, or more beta partners, but. But I do feel that it really is. So there's a lot of women who have used these female-led apps or where females initiate, cis women initiate. And it is bizarre because then they're like, but then this guy like hasn't asked me out and I don't understand why. And I'm like, well, because the way the app is is structured is that it's you're taking a lead you're courting the men like you're the one who's the alpha even though they don't want that to happen which again there's no judgment there it's just i think people should know that that's what's being set up there like that's what's being set up so and it is harder i think that again just generally in society even though it's changing we're we're conditioned and possibly we want some of us want um someone who's again in cis scenarios someone who's male identified to take more of the lead and so it is kind of weird for for a cis man then sometimes from clients and friends and things and from personal experiences to get messages from women and then be like oh well she's chasing me okay and i say chase because even the message is chase starting the chase that is starting the chase of courtship and so so it is bizarre even though uh, you talk to a million cis men who will be like, oh my God, that's like my fantasy to have all these women messaging me. Like, no, it's weird for them. Once it happens, it's bizarre. And the other thing is, right? And then the other thing is, in addition to that, I think that um, a lot of men don't know. It's almost like a kid in a candy store. It's like, okay, now all these women are messaging me now. So, uh, oh, I have my pick of the people. So I can just not message back whoever I don't want. It's like what people mm-hmm. complain about on, like, Tinder and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of cis guys complain. Like, I message all these girls and nobody messages back. And so that's kind of what's happening in reverse for cis yeah. women yeah. or uh, female-identified people. Right. So right. it's very it's a very interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, but so, so to go to back to the first part of my question then, are there any tips for, for going into actually writing messages, whether you're male or female? Is part of it just accepting you're not going to get replies, or, or is there you know something you found to be more effective or not? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you know what I think that in the in the app game especially, but online dating as well, I think it's important to not take it too seriously in the beginning. Mm-hmm. It is a little bit of a numbers game. There's so much eye candy there. You know, a lot of it. I mean, I I do kind of live in terms of like the universe and serendipity and these things. And I think that sometimes maybe you know you're not meant that person's not meant to message you back for a reason, and maybe that's good. <laughs> maybe that there's a reason you know you know energetically that that's not happening and that's fine. Um, but generally, I think messages should just be like we we don't overthink it. Like maybe there's something interesting in someone's profile, you know, that caught your eye. So message them about that or. Oh my gosh, you say that you're into, you know, um, um, I don't know, knife play. I don't know why that popped into my head. That's craziness. But, uh, you know, whatever. Like, me too! (laughs) Or whatever, you know? So, like, that's a really good way to start is, you know, then that person can see that you actually looked at their profile, not just your photos. So to find something specific like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I I mean, and and, you know, not, I, 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 I do like to say that I have the gift of gab. So for me, it's it's easy to start a conversation about whatever. But um, but if someone isn't, it's just like help. You know, hope you're having a great day. Like just wanted to say hi real quick, and you know, just send you a quick message. Something like that is great. You know, it's not like hey, sup, like sup. 
homie, you know, like, you know. I have found We've it's, all gotten those messages. It's been interesting because yeah. within, <laughs> with, since the beginning of the year, like, I kind of tried Bumble for the first time, which for listeners that don't know, it is one of the apps that's designed so that, so that the woman right. does have to, to, send to send the, the first, first message. message. Um, and for the first time in my life, really being like, oh, suddenly there's this pressure to craft this, like, opening message. Yeah. Um, because it's all on me and it's actually like it's actually been kind of fun for me stepping into that role of like okay like I can be the initiator and I can figure out like what is something really genuine that I can say to somebody um, th- where like even if they don't message me back it's like that thing is still true like maybe I can comment on like their eyes or like how funny it is how they wrote their profile or whatever you know that actually I've really enjoyed that process but I feel like on the male side on the cis male side um I think that a lot of men get really burnt out after mm-hmm. like sending Probably. out 20 messages that they've tried to craft and like tried to pick out something on the profile and try to make sure that the person knows that like they actually read their profile and then getting no responses that like, yeah. I feel like that's what I see is like a lot of people are getting just so burnt out after a while. I, I mean, I get burnt out. Like, mm-hmm. I give you credit, Dedeker, because you're you you fa- you found the fun in, in and <laughs> well, but to be messages. fair though, I only match someone on Bumble once every like. 200 matches or, or like swipes or oh, something geez. like that so it's like so i'm only sending wow. out very very few messages i'm not mm. sending out a bunch yeah. i imagine if i was sending out a bunch i'd probably get burnt super super fast yeah, yeah. I, I found that that bumble it gave me my first experience with something that has happened to a lot more females that i know who are poly which is where on bumble i got a message from someone who who i was attracted to and was interested in i was like dude this is great like she's she's pursuing me so like clearly she's into what I wrote and is cool with that. And like maybe a couple days into messaging a little bit, then all of a sudden she's like, uh, so I looked into what polyamory is and like, I couldn't like, that just sounds awful. And like, this is terrible. I don't think this is going to work out. I'm unmatching you. That thing of like having someone pursue you and then actually fucking read your (laughs) profile and then rejecting you after they were the one who started it. And I'd never had that as a guy because usually I'm the one doing the pursuing. So... And you're saying, so you actually have like, you have ethical non-monogamy or something like that on your profile and they didn't read it? Is that what you're saying? I I link to the podcast. I go all out. I'm like, if you want to know what my deal <laughs> like, is, I'm like super. Out. If you want to know everything here about my freaking are. life and dating practices, right. here's almost 200 <laughs> episodes of a podcast, or not maybe 150 yeah. episodes of a podcast. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I'm. It's all very clearly there, um, but I guess she just hadn't taken the time to actually look into that. Yes, not. Know. You know what? <laughs> and that's really frustrating. That happens a lot. I I mean, again, I think everyone involved is dodging a bullet that would work for them or not and so again it's it, it, it i feel like that i feel like there was a way to like cut out all the drama and, and not be so weirdly hurtful in a weird way of like ew or judgmental like oh well i checked yeah. out your website and that's ew ew i wish there was a way to avoid that but because again because you were so like here's what i'm about um, not right. that it's okay, but you know, that's what comes back sometimes. But I think it's, I think it's good that you're so like here. And, and again, it's not like you're saying, like you're saying, here's a link, check me out. And then you can make a yeah. decision. Yeah, I think right. that's actually a really cool way to do it. You know? Well, yeah. it was, in my mind, it was, it was a bummer because I was very attracted to her. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> for her pictures at least, uh, but the bummer was that. Well, I guess the bummer was overridden by the idea that, like, okay, I saved myself. Yeah, that could have that could have been a conversation that happened in the middle of your first date. Right. That she was clearly oh disgusted, like, that to your been face. Really, yeah. yeah. Really sad. No, it's the worst so feeling worse. ever. It's the worst. It's the worst feeling. No matter, like, I don't care how confident somebody is or whatever. It's it freaking sucks. Okay, and that's yeah. the one thing I'll say too. Like when I, you know, I, a lot of times when I'm coaching, especially baby boomers, again. Um, you know, in addition to them being like, where do I begin with all this? A lot of them, because they have gone through divorces and things, their confidence is really, like, taking a hit. And so yeah. one of the things I've told them, though, is, like, you know, it's like an athlete or anybody, you know, the difference between someone who – or an entrepreneur or whatever industry you want to go in. You know, the difference in my estimation, my humble opinion, the difference between people who are successful – are and people who aren't are people the people who are successful just felt the fear and did it anyway or had the rejection and went through it anyway you know it's not about everyone goes through it everyone gets rejected at some point you know everyone has gone through heart 
break. Everyone's been broken up with. Everyone's broken up with. So, you know, it's all of these things. Everyone's felt some sort of affection towards someone. But, you know, the people who are, are whatever success looks like in dating and relationships, those people are able to feel that because they've gone through the, the shit. And been like, yeah. oh, you know what? I'm still gonna. I'm not gonna just quit people. I'm not gonna quit on people. <laughs> you know. Um. So this is a question that amazingly we get a lot, which I get it. But um, in this day and age of being online for most of your dating experience, I think some people just want to nix that entirely and meet people in real life. But a lot of people ask us where and how do you meet people in real life, especially within the polyamorous community. So do you have any good tips for that? Yes. Yes. Meeting people IRL. IRL as the kids <laughs> uh-huh. say, right? Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like, especially in a big city, meetup groups are great. I think meetup groups are really great. And even if you go to a meetup group uh, or a meetup event at a meet with a meetup group and you're like, mm, I don't think there's anyone here that I'm specifically interested in. You never know what other things those people might have going on or what other connections or people those other people might know. So just generally, if you're someone who wants to meet someone in real life, I think it's amazing. I think it's really important that you go out into the actual world <laughs> and actually <laughs> yeah. do things where people are. So whether it be, it doesn't, it doesn't even have to necessarily be like, um, a poly, a poly group, you know, polyamorous group. It could be, you know, again, if you're into, I don't know why my mind's going to like knives and witchery. I don't know. I was going to say if you're into witchcraft, I don't know. And again, if you are awesome, but if you're into like knitting or archery or whatever, I think just being around people that you enjoy doing the same things with is great. The other thing is, is that if you're, if you're say into something like BDSM or certain other countercultures, sometimes the lines are blurred a little bit. Like there's a lot of, not all, but there's a lot of people who are into BDSM who are also non-monogamous in some way and vice versa. And so, so some of these do kind of like intertwine a little bit. Um, some of these yeah, things. So yeah. Join, joining LARPing is another one that I've heard is a good technique for meeting poly yeah, people. There's a ton that of up. poly people in LARPing. God, yeah. just, that's crazy. I'm uh, not LARPing surprised. is live action role playing for those, for those of, you, of who you who are not up on your nerd terms. <laughs> Wait, well, think, what is it called? Well, I think live action live role action playing. Role playing. LARPing. It's the nerdiest thing LARPing? ever. LARPing. L-A-R-P. Oh, I didn't. Is it like an anagram? LARP. Yeah. LARP. Yeah. LARP. yeah. LARP. Live, live action role playing. It's like the people who, you know, actually go out with a bunch of other people to, uh, you know, big yeah. park or a campground and dress up act and out dress their up. characters yeah. and everything. Yeah. I just didn't know it was called LARPing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like make believe for adults. All the kids. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. big, big overlap with polyamory in that mm. community. Well, I really oh, like Oh, really? What, I really like yeah. What, I really liked what you said, Aaron, about about finding a place where you can go and be with people who are into the same things, whether that's you know a polyamory or BDSM focused meetup or something else could be about LARPing or soccer or knitting or knife play or whatever. Um, because that really falls in line with I know what Jace has said before, but that's like showing up to an event or a workshop or a meetup with the intention of making connections and, and making friends rather than let me just go down the line and evaluate who I'm attracted to or not. Because as you said, Aaron, like you never know. You don't know who else is going to show up to the meetup. You don't know who those people are connected to. You don't know what other groups you're going to you're going to be introduced to through those people. And so kind of first of all, coming in with that sense of I'm just going to make friends, first of all, so that you don't give off a weird predatory vibe. And then second of all, yeah. so that you kind of ha- you have more opportunities to demonstrate yourself just being a quality person mm-hmm. in general, which is really attractive to people, you know, even if you're yes. not dating everybody who's in the meetup group. Yes. And like, amazing. Yes. And you're there doing something fun that you enjoy. And that's yeah. really what it should be about. Like you're, you know, that's one reason why, in my, again, in my humble opinion, that so many single people hate dating. It's because they make it this, like, job that's not fun. And, you know, especially depending on where you are in where in the world, in the country, in the world, you know, there's something interesting to do everywhere you are, you know? And if there isn't, create something interesting to do. Or, or I mean, but that's not even true. I was going to say, like, small, some small towns. But, no, I'm from a small town in Ohio, and I was there a week ago, and they had a pride <laughs> festival, and they have nice. a bunch of stuff going on. So it doesn't, wherever you are, 
find people doing fun things that you enjoy and you know you're gonna have fun because you're going to the thing you like and it just so happens there might be other people there who are also doing that thing and you might have a connection but if not you're having fun hopefully Mm -hmm. you know Awesome. Thank you so much, Erin. So we have one final Yay. question for you. And this is the question that we yes. like to ask all of our guests. Uh, and that is, if you could give just one piece of advice to someone who's kind of starting out in non-monogamy, perhaps in trying to date non-monogamous people, if you just had one piece of advice that you would give to someone who's newer to this, what would it be? Okay, well, the first thing that comes to my head is be honest with yourself and your potential partners. That is number one. You know, they're all, like we said earlier, there are so many varying things under the umbrella of non-monogamy. And, you know, my non-monogamy probably won't look the same as someone else's or yours, Dedeker, or yours, Jace, or yours, Emily. So it's really important to know what that means for you first. And then go into the into the dating pool knowing that. And then be be as honest as you can with the people that you might you know, end up dating about that, you know, and uh, saying that having said that, you know, I'm fully aware that, you know, it might be in flux. And like I said, for myself, I've had various types of relationships. I'm not just one category or I'm only this or only non-monogamous or only. So that can change. But number one is if, if you don't know what you are looking for or where you are currently, like today, whatever day this is right now, I don't even know. But if you don't know what you're looking for right now, at this state of being right now, then it's going to be confusing for everyone you try to interact with. And it's going to be just, again, that's when you invite the drama, the headaches begin, the confusion and the misunderstandings and all of that. So that's my one advice. Get as clear as you can about what you want right now that can change but just be clear now and go out into the world young grasshopper and enjoy. Aww, that's great awesome, awesome. so erin um if our listeners want to find more of your stuff where can they find you yes yes so people can find me on my website which is the dating advice girl.com i'm on all the social medias um and they're all on my website twitter whatever at dating advice girl on twitter and instagram but uh yeah, so thank you so much. It's been awesome. so Yay. fun. I love thank this you, conversation. All right, that was fantastic. I, I loved that interview yeah. with Erin. Lots of great stuff. Um, and she's just so charming. Yeah, she is. She's great. <laughs> All right, if you have a question, a specific question or something that you would like to ask and have us answer on the show, the way to do that is to call our new phone number, which is area code 678-M-U-L-T-I-05 which is 678-M-U-L-T-I-05. Well, that's going to be real weird with a delay. But. Yeah. Sorry, um, sorry. For anyone who is international, you can send us a Facebook audio message by going to our Facebook page and sending us an audio message that way. You can also email us at info at multiamory.com or send us a message on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any of those things. We love hearing from you and knowing what it is you'd like to hear about or what's going on in your lives. To support our show and to join our private Facebook community, you can go to patreon.com slash multiamory. Multiamory is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Dedeker Winston, and me, Emily Matlack. Our episodes are edited by Mauricio. Our social media wizard is Will McMillan. And our theme song is Forms I Know I Did by Josh Nanad from the Fractal Cave EP. Hi, I'm Mike Joseph from the Cherry Crow Chronicles radio show and podcast, and you're listening to a Swing Set podcast at swingset.fm.